Good evening, I'm Saul Sainz, and this is ABC7 Extra Sunday Edition. I want to thank you for sharing your Sunday evening with us. There's a great deal of progress we are all making on the COVID-19 front worthy of celebrating after the CDC made this announcement on Thursday. Anyone who is fully vaccinated can participate in indoor and outdoor activities, large or small, without wearing a mask or physical distancing. Thursday, the CDC announced it is safe for fully vaccinated people to drop the mask use for both indoor and outdoors. Again, only if the person is fully vaccinated. However, the CDC is recommending people still mask in trains, buses, and hospitals. CDC officials say the new mask requirements are due largely because a big part of the population is fully vaccinated. And on the same day the CDC gave the mask update, local officials announced El Paso reached a new milestone. 50% of El Pasoans are fully vaccinated. That percentage can be attributed to El Pasoans leading the way in getting immunizations more so than other Texas communities. And that's not just with the COVID-19 vaccine, but flu shots as well. But unlike other communities, El Paso is unique because we are a border city sharing our border with Juarez, a city with a low percentage of fully vaccinated people. Earlier in the week, the FDA and CDC approved the use of Pfizer vaccines for children 12 to 16 year olds. It was an announcement that will have a huge impact on school attendance, summer school and summer camps for El Paso's youth. Tonight, I will ask well-known epidemiologist Dr. Ogachika Lozi if dropping the mask use in the borderline is safe given our unique geographical and socioeconomic situation. I will ask my second guest, health authority and pediatrician Dr. Hector Ocaranza if it is safe for children to also drop the mask and head back to the classroom or summer camp if they are fully vaccinated. Joining us is now Dr. Ogachika Lozi. Dr. Lozi is an epidemi epidemiologist, as I just mentioned. Also with us is health authority Dr. Hector Ocaranza. Carranza. Dr. Carranza is also a pediatrician, so I'll start with you, Dr. Carranza. Your thoughts on the Pfizer vaccine being approved for children by the FDA with the CDC's approval. Doctor, uh, what, what do you think uh, on this front, Dr. Carranza? Well, this is great news that we received from the FDA and the ACIP. We were expecting that to happen, and we're happy to embrace that authorization so we can start immunizing our adolescents that are 12 years of age and older. There's trials going for the pediatric population even younger than 12 years of age, so we will be waiting for that. One thing that we need to uh, mention is that this is a great opportunity to not only immunize the adolescents, but also those parents that haven't received the vaccine. And as we mentioned before, this uh, vaccination effort is what is going to take us to less restrictive and more normal uh, life. And this summer is going to be the perfect time that we can continue to push forward. We can continue to encourage people and actually give the right information to the people that still have some, some doubt, some hesitancy, so they can go get vaccinated with confidence that the vaccine is safe, the vaccine is effective, and that's the way that we're going to be able to bring our children back to school for in-person instruction at 100%, which we fully support, and have some other activities. Dr. Olozzi, I have to ask you, based on your research, what do you think prompted the CDC to make that announcement, the dropping of the mask use if you're fully vaccinated? Is it new research or is it uh, old research that just came up? Because I know that uh, nationwide, the percentage of fully vaccinated people is not quite as high as obviously in El Paso. Yeah, definitely. But I think we also have to remember, and we've talked about this before, the CDC's job is not to be speculative. They're not an options trader on the stock market. And so the CDC is historically cautious, and I think that's fair. The data has been pretty solid since January and February. We started to see information coming out of Israel, the United Kingdom, and by March, the data was there was really a plethora of data showing that vaccines reduce serious side effects, reduce transmission, and we didn't need masks. The CDC has followed the science, and they've caught up with it. They're comfortable with it, and they've made this sort of U-turn or reversal. I think, as Dr. Carranza pointed out, that is going to help people. There are a lot of people that will say, well, what about those that are unvaccinated, that are going to lie that they're not vaccinated? The reality is this. Those that were unvaccinated that did not want to ever get vaccinated were already engaging in society. Across the South, it's been clear, Texas, Florida, Georgia, the other states in the South. And so this isn't for them. This is for those that have been on the fence and realizing now that the data is pretty clear that they can actually remove their masks and be a little bit more free and get back to normal. I think that will drive some uptake in vaccines, hopefully. 
I have a follow-up question for you, Dr. Lozzi. What about transmission? Can those who are fully vaccinated carry the virus and, tra and transmit it over to people who have not been vaccinated? And is that, is that a concern? Is it possible? Yes. Does the data show that it reduces it by at least 80 to 100 percent in multiple studies? We have Israel, we have the United Kingdom, we have the CDC study, we have 100 percent protection and transmission in the nursing home study um, <clears throat> that came out about two weeks ago. I think the conversation about transmission, people get into this space of is zero COVID. There is no zero COVID. We have reduced it with vaccine to the rate of anything else. In fact, getting in your car and driving post-vaccination, your risk is higher of a car accident than it is of getting a virus. I think there's some other sort of errors we've made in the post-mortem of that can be done at a later date. But I think the transmission data is solid. And it's one of the reasons that the CDC has said, hey, post-vaccination, you don't need a mask. Okay, and real quickly, in 30 seconds I have left in this segment, uh, Dr. Ocaranza, any concerns that children who are vaccinated can transmit that to other children who are not transmitted because they are going to be in a classroom and in closed area? Well, actually, the data and the studies have shown that the younger the child, the less likely it is that they're going to be transmitting the virus to other children and to adults. It is actually, in fact, that adults are the ones that were transmitted the virus to younger children. And that was observed in the households where one of the parents would bring the virus to the house and then would give the virus to the rest of the family. Uh, and in contrast, when there was an index case of a child in a school and there were some very large studies mm -hmm. that were shown that it was extremely minimal the amount of uh, the secondary cases that would come when a young child was an index case and was not transmitted to other to other children. That was the reason why we support the bringing the children back 100%, especially because of the benefits that we're gonna be having for children to come for in-person instruction. And what we need to focus is, is not just in, in how much they're gonna be transmitted, those benefits that these children are gonna be having in school, how we can teach them to wash their hands, to actually, do some other preventive actions. They right. are wonderful at learning those things, and that's what's going to keep them healthy. Got it. We're going to take a quick break. You're watching ABC7 Extra Sunday Edition. When we come back, I'll ask my guests more about dropping the mask. Should our passwords adhere to the stricter guidelines than what the CDC is telling us, given the fact that we are a border city with people crossing the border to and from Juarez every day? You're watching ABC7 Extra, where news comes first. Mark your calendar today and make plans to attend this free and amazing time of worship with world-renowned and Grammy Award nominee, Todd Delaney. You're doing it again. This live worship experience is scheduled for Saturday, May 22nd at 7 p.m. in the main auditorium at Joy Center, 1208 Sumac Drive. Doors open at 6. For more information, visit joycenter.org. With Root Insurance, you have the power to control your own rates, and that could save you a lot of money. Root is a new type of car insurance that looks deeper than other insurers by using the sensors in your smartphone to understand important details about how you actually drive. That's how Root is able to give better drivers a better price. Here's how it works. Download our app, get on the road, and then get a quote. Learn how you can take control of your car insurance at joinroot.com. Looking to shift into an electric vehicle? El Paso Electric can help. We're your resource to learn about electric vehicles, special charging rates, and potential incentives. Because driving green can actually save you some green with our Go EV Savings Program. It's your connection to learn about great discounts on electric vehicles available at local dealerships. So if you're ready to buy electric, visit epelectric.com slash EV and get started today. Casa Kia is bringing the heat this month with hard-hitting savings on every new Kia. We've got 2021 Kia K5s with 0% APR for 60 months. Get a Kia Forte with 0% APR for 60 months. Plus, we honor in Memorial Day by matching military discounts all month long. Let's get ready to save at Casa Kia or online at casakia.com. Car classes to Casa here at Casa Kia. 
Welcome back to ABC7 Extra Sunday Edition. We went out to the community and asked parents how they feel about children ages 12 to 15 years old being vaccinated. One mother had this insightful response. First, I would say probably they're saying they're showing that younger children do not show the same symptoms initially for COVID infections as adults do, but they are having an inflammatory response that is completely different than what adults are having, um, first and foremost. And second, I would say, do your research, not on Facebook, not on Twitter, not on Instagram. Do your research that is unbiased, evidence-based. You hopefully have a good relationship with your child's pediatrician. I also want to welcome back Dr. Ogochika Lozi. Dr. Lozi is an epidemi epidemiologist as well as our health authority, Dr. Hector Ocaranza. Dr. Ocaranza is a pediatrician as well. Dr. Ocaranza, I just want to let you know what the mom says. She's essentially saying that don't be going to Facebook or Twitter to, to uh, find out your research, but rather talk to your pediatrician. Are you getting a lot of questions, uh, Dr. Ocaranza, from parents about what it is, uh, the, all, everything that they have to think about the side effects and everything in reference to children being vaccinated? Yes, definitely. And it has given me an opportunity to sit down with those parents and explain to them how uh, looking for information on social media is not the best way to do it. Your pediatrician, your doctor, your primary care provider can give you the right information. If people like to look for information electronically, they can do so in more reputable sources. But actually, every time I see a parent that they bring their child for the vaccines, my question also to them is like, have you received your COVID shot? And if you haven't received it, is there a reason why not? Or if, if there's any doubts, any questions that I can answer for you so we can make it clear that it is the right thing to do to receive the vaccine and that's the way that you're going to continue being healthy so you can continue caring for your child. So that, that's the message that we want to continue giving to those parents because many of us as parents want to protect our children and they're willing to give the shot to their their kids and their children and when it comes to our health it's like well no I'd rather do it first for my child but this is one of those cases where if we parents get vaccinated, remain healthy, we'll be able to provide best care to our children and we're going to be able to keep our household healthy and safe. Yeah. Dr. Alozi, uh, I do want to ask you, first of all, your thoughts, because I haven't gotten your thoughts on the new CDC guidelines of dropping the mask. And is it something that, that El Pasoans can do, given the fact that we have so many people crossing back and forth the border where there's low immunization rates? Yeah, I think, again, um, in terms of dropping the mask, so I think one thing we also have to remember is that many people had already done that, right? So across the country, people were already dropping masks. People were already not wearing masks outside. Throughout the pandemic, I never wore a mask outside because the data didn't support it. Understanding what the guidance had been, but I think it was a little bit um, distracting. As we're getting to this point, we're really seeing people that are either vaccinated or unvaccinated. And then the subgroup of that is want to continue with mandates and don't. And as I sort of said the other day, we can't get into virtue signaling about being good or bad about it, right? At this point in time, the best process to reduce your risk is get vaccinated. After you're vaccinated, only you can determine what further protection you want to do. And there's no right or wrong way to do that. I think that's important. In terms of the border, again, I think to protect our community, we have to increase vaccination percentages. We will be protected from whatever transmission there is across the border when El Paso and Juarez are vaccinated at an appropriate level. And some will say 40, some will say 50. And I think we just need to get there. And hopefully the government, the federal administration, will start to work with other countries like our southern neighbors to get them more vaccine supply. How does all this figure into herd immunity? We're at 50% right now fully vaccination. I know that we want to re at least reach 70 to 75%. But would, would we have any, any herd immunity with having 50% uh, vaccination? And of course, given the fact that we're now dropping the mask, will we be able to achieve yeah. that? Absolutely. And I think, again, one of the things, and we've talked about this before, so herd immunity threshold is a range. Right, It's a range based on how much infection is in your community and how it's transmitting. 
we've often said, I've often said, it's somewhere between the 50 to 70% range, right? And so if you take 50, we're there. You can say 60, and I think an aspirational goal is to get to 70. But again, Saul, here's the key. Looking at the real world evidence out of Israel and the United Kingdom and the Northeastern states that have the highest vaccine percentages, you hit about 40, 45% of first dose in your community, maybe second dose 50% you see a drastic reduction in cases and transmission. We are at less, and Dr. Carranza can correct me, less than five cases per 100,000, if I'm not mistaken. And the truth is this, we set a goal in 2020 that when we get to below five per 100,000, we would start to redu reduce mandates and get back to normal. At a point in time, we can't continue to sort of go with what's called the the COVID fear porn, right, of 2020, and it was very divisive. I've heard a term recently called hot back summer, and I think that's where we're heading towards. Got it. Dr. Orcaranza, we received an email from a concerned parent of a child with Down syndrome. Uh, this parent wants to know about side effects of the vaccine on children with Down syndrome. Actually, Down syndrome kids they need to get vaccinated because they're definitely at risk of other infections. So the side effects or the reactions of the vaccine in the phase three trials on these adolescents have been comparable to those that older adolescents or the young adults, meaning that you're gonna be having some pain in the side of the injection. You're gonna be having some tiredness, body aches maybe, but the reality is that many people do not have any, any reactions to the vaccine. Many people fear that what's gonna be the reaction or the long-term effect of the vaccine. And so far what we have seen in close to probably over six months that, that the vaccine has been rolled out and, and tried, there hasn't been any long-term side effects but compared to having the COVID infection, definitely we're calling the lung haulers or, or the lung hauler COVID uh, side effects after you recover from the infection. So definitely having the infection is gonna carry a lot more consequences than receiving the vaccine and receiving the vaccine, I cannot stress enough and underline the benefits that we're gonna be having by vaccinating everybody. So I'm very happy that that parent having the, the child with special needs is gonna be vaccinating uh, his child or her child, but the whole family in that household needs to be vaccinated as well. All right, we're gonna take another uh, quick break. Still ahead, before you go out and hold a mask burning party, listen to what our experts have to say about what it would take to go back to strict face mask wearing and social distancing. I'll ask both doctors what would trigger a return to those mandates when we come back. An awful lot can change overnight. Breaking news from the ABC 7 Alert Center following two separate shootings this morning. ABC 7's Good Morning El Paso knows you need to get up to speed fast. We do know that one of those victims is suffering serious injuries. The ABC 7 Alert Center is Good Morning El Paso's tool for the latest updates to keep your family safe. This is a developing story. Once we learn more information, we'll be sure to let you know on air and online at kvi8.com. Only on ABC 7's Good Morning El Paso. The borderland is strongest when we support each other. That's what Borderland Local Links is all about. Connect with your favorite restaurants, check out activities your family can enjoy, preview upcoming sports and entertainment events. It's all right at your fingertips. Just go to kvia.com and click on local links right there at the top of the page or scan the QR code on the screen with your phone. Borderland Local Links, supporting local business, connecting you to things that make life better. Unleash the power of zero at Oscar Leaser's Hyundai of El Paso with 0% APR, zero down, or zero payments for 90 days on hundreds of new Hyundais. Feel the power of zero with 0% APR for 60 months or zero down. That's zero cash out of pocket on any new Hyundai in stock or get no payments for 90 days. Feel the power of zero on Elantra, Sonata, Tucson, Kona, Santa Fe, and more. Only at Oscar Leaser's Hyundai of El Paso. You may ask yourself, what is a blue raspberry? Or a pink lemon? Or even a strawberry watermelon? But they taste so good in these Minute Maid slushies from McDonald's. Who cares? It's more than a drink. It's a McDonald's drink. Right now, get the coolest flavors of the summer and enjoy the refreshing taste of $2 any size slushies while you can.
Welcome back to ABC7 National, and also want to welcome back Dr. Ogachika Lozi. Uh, also with us is Health Authority Dr. Hector Orcaranza. Doctors, uh, this question is for both of you. Does this mean that the pandemic is over, which is a lot of what a lot of people are thinking, or for vaccinated people, or do they still have to take certain precautions? I'll start this time with you, Dr. Lozi. Pandemic's not over by any stretch of the imagination, right? We still have 10 states across the country that are above 10% in what's called excess death. So it's not over. And we still have a large percent of the country that's not vaccinated. And whether you want to vaccinate kids or throw them into that mix or not, it's up to you. People that have concerns that are unvaccinated are going to continue to bear the brunt of this going forward. Once you're vaccinated and you have concerns, you may change your risk. You may say, hey, I don't want to go into a restaurant. I want to continue to wear a mask. And I think that's more than fair. Each individual has to take the decisions for their own and their family's health and figure out what the risks are. I think to answer sort of your second level question about what would it take into the future, I think if we continue to get people vaccinated, Dr. Carranza and his team doing surveillance, the state, federal government, they're continuing to do surveillance around the variants. If we see into the fall that the variants actually escape, to date, let's be clear, none of the variants escape the existing vaccines, then that's a different conversation that we can have about potentially doing boosters or maybe changing. My actual prediction is that I don't think we're going back to any type of um, stringent requirements again. I think the focus is going to be on vaccines and potentially boosters into the future. Dr. Carranza, your thoughts? Definitely, I completely agree. The pandemic is not over. We have changed our stage in the pandemic. This is what it is, and pandemics evolve. As people remember, initially we were focusing on the testing, identify those who were infected. Now we're at a different stage of the pandemic where we need to prevent the rapid spread of the virus among unvaccinated or susceptible individuals. That's what we're pushing really hard in the vaccination because that's the way that we're gonna be preventing a lot of these uh, infections in the community, unvaccinated community. I'm very confident of our community because they respond really well to vaccinations. We know the benefits of the vaccination, not only for COVID-19, but for influenza or many other uh, vaccine preventable diseases. So we will continue to uh, give this big effort into the prevention. We will see what's going to be the background rate of the COVID infection because definitely, as Dr. Losi mentioned, there's going to be people that are not going to get vaccinated and they're still going to be susceptible. We're still going to be seeing some of those infections, people getting hospitalized because of the COVID. But we need to see how much is going to be the background rate. We need to continue protecting our community in in the best way that we've been doing up to so far. Dr. Ocaranza, I have a follow-up question for you. You are the El Paso City and County Health Authority. At what point in time, because I do remember that when uh, our, our governor, uh, Greg Abbott, said that you can drop the mask, we decided here in El Paso we're going to keep the mask mandate. At what point in time will El Paso, what will it take for El Paso to drop the mask as well? Well, definitely looking at our community as a whole, we need to look at different angles. Uh, we, we need to uh, acknowledge that people that are fully vaccinated can drop the mask if they're going to be gathering with people that they know that they are vaccinated. But as a community hall, there's going to be businesses. We're still going to be requiring for people to go in with a mask. And that's going to continue protecting those that are unvaccinated protect employees and definitely we will continue helping the whole region in slowing down and stopping the spread of the virus. So we need to be cautious. We need to be uh, conservative in this approach and that has paid off protecting as many of our citizens and residents uh, during the pandemic. Definitely. Yeah. D does does that mean that we're not expecting an announcement anytime soon that we can drop the mask? You won't you won't be announcing that anytime soon? Not anytime soon, but it all depends on the more people we have vaccinated, the faster we can get to that point. Your opinion on that, uh, Dr. Lozi, are we closer to dropping the mask here in El Paso? You've seen what it's like here in El Paso. Uh, do you think that we're closer to it, given the fact that we are 50 percent of our population is fully vaccinated? Well, I think, I mean, I'm going to defer to Dr. Carranza and his group, right? I mean, they set that tempo and they set that tone. I will say, as myself and Dr. Carranza are the co-chairs of the El Paso City County COVID-19 Task Force, it's a conversation that we'll have. Um, I'm a lot more bullish about this 
And so, but again, at the end of the day, I can only advise my dear friend, Dr. Carranza, and say, hey, this is what the data shows. We can't be behind the curve on the data because we're afraid. And so, again, I think that's part of it. But again, he gets to make that decision. I just get to call him and text him and say, hey, let's let's think about this. As always, that was a very diplomatic answer, and I appreciate that. Let me ask you, will a summer or summer camps have a different look now that children are being vaccinated? And what do you think uh, summer camps will, will look like? Dr. Losey? I mean, so again, this is where we have to sort of separate the fear and anxiety and the concern, which is rightfully there from what some of the data shows, right? Like Dr. Carranza said, kids don't transmit as much. They have cases that are just as high and actually higher, right? Younger people have actually borne the brunt of this pandemic. We focus on the deaths because that's what frightens us, but more young kids have actually gotten cases, right? So I think that's important. However, a lot of these camps are outside. It never made sense that the dilutional effect of the air need to be pro pro needed to be protected by a mask, right? And so I think if you're a parent or a kid outside, enjoy the breeze, enjoy the air. I mean, we're blessed to have the kind of weather that we do. Some people may have concerns about indoor. I mean, kids, I've seen kids playing basketball and some wear masks, some don't. My son is going to camp personally, and I don't have any concerns about it. I'm going to send him to camp and not be worried about it. But again, that's an individual decision. Um, I don't think that's something, and again, Dr. Carranza drives that, but I don't think that's something that we should necessarily argue about. It's summer, and like I said, it's hot back summer. People need to enjoy it. Got it. Dr. Lozzi, Dr. Ogachika Lozzi, Dr. Hector Carranza, thank you so much for taking time uh, to talk to us and share all the information that our viewers need to know before they drop that mask. I appreciate you. Thank you. And thank I leave you with home. this thought. We may have the green light to drop the mask and be able to exhale that sigh of relief from the long, drawn-out pandemic. In the coming weeks and months, we will no doubt reflect on the lessons learned. COVID-19 claimed thousands of lives in the borderland. Hopefully, we have learned not only to take care of ourselves, but each other as well. Thank you for joining us. I'm Saul Sainz, and this has been ABC7 Extra Sunday Edition. Good night y buenas noches.